I happen to have two and a tote on my alphas, but we'll be detoting things too, so don't worry about it. Just lay back to begin. This position is called Ardha Shavasana. And generally, I like your feet a little wider. Um, and then just for a moment, knock your knees together with your feet a little wider, as wide as your mat. And relax your head onto the mat. And when you do that, if you feel like your head is falling into the floor because you're so used to being in a head forward position um, and it's not comfortable, put a blanket under your head like a pillow. Turn your palms up and maybe bring your arms a little wider away from your body so that there's more space for you to have a sense of breath. Close your eyes. Go into the silence. Go into what I call the inner listening state. And begin to inhale into the belly and up into the chest. A gentle yet vibrant inhale. And then fully, completely let that exhale go. Do this a few times, inhaling through the nose into belly and chest, and exhaling. I like to use the mantra, I watch my body breathe. And even in the midst of watching, inner listening, I notice my mind wants to wander. And I bring it back. It's becoming more attuned to the subtleties as you reach your arms over your head and stretch away, laying your arms on the floor above you. Either palm, just let your palms be up. And now do some breathing and notice what this feels like. Notice what the reach capacity is, how straight or not your elbows are, how close your arms are or far away from your head. And then just take your left arm down at your side where it was to begin with and look over your left shoulder and just see how far you can turn your head. And then bring it back to center, bring your left arm over your head and take your right arm down. And check in with your head, neck and shoulders here. You definitely feel tighter on this side. Just noticing. And then both arms come down. Great. So I try to do an quote unquote impeccable demonstration before you do the action. So I'm gonna take my brick and stack it under my head, have it available for under my head, and then I'm gonna detote two yoga tuna balls. It doesn't matter if they're the medium or the small, it just depends on what would feel good to you today. Coming up on my elbows, I'm gonna place the balls just below my bro strap, bra strap line, and lay my head back down onto the block. So you can see that. And oh, this is a spot that is just breathless for me personally. And if it feels like it's too breathless for you, you can always put a second block under your hips. That works too. <laughs> and now bring your arms into the sky and just begin to sort of roll your shoulders around a little and explore the erector muscles of your mid-back. Some um, people, above the bra strap line, you said? Um, I say below the bra strap line. Oh, okay. oh, just below. Yeah, it's a real hot spot, potentially. You can tip your pubic bone toward and away from your face. I had to put my block 
onto my, um, underneath my butt so that I could tip my pubic bone toward and away. And this makes the balls move. You can bring your arms and explore the space around you with your hands and your elbows. And I'll bet you're not breathing. Please breathe. You can jiggle your, your ribs from left to right and right to left a little here to clunkety clunk over the erector spinning muscles. Stop here, bring your arms at your side, and I want you to do a little cough. Yeah. Isn't that, it's like so freeing to be able to cough and no one's going, oh my God, germ. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Yeah. Now use your feet and move the balls up your back just a tiny bit. And begin again. Sometimes I do like a rolling motion with my hands. I may have to pull my brick down lower to support my head. And just for a moment, I'm gonna to try to take the brick out. It's, oh, see what that gravity and pressure is like. Reach your right arm over your head and wave an imaginary med, um, flag, like actually, like you're at a concert and you have a lighter and you're telling the band how much you love to sway to their music. Are you breathing? And then bring your arm, right arm down. Maybe your elbow, right elbow is gonna support you a little as you reach your left arm over your head and sway to the music. And then put both elbows on the floor and move the balls up your back a tiny bit. You may have to readjust the brick again under your head. Reach your arms over your head. Make sure your feet are nice and wide. If they're in the center, sometimes it's hard to you feel like you're going to fall over. Like use your feet as support. And just sway your body. Inhales and exhales. Give yourself a massive hug right here. And just rock from side to side. Like you're in a canoe and the water is hitting you on the left. Swaying to you to the right. And the water hits you on the right. And sways you to the left. And then reach your arms overhead like you just took off your shirt and you're like, freedom. And roll the balls up between your shoulder blades now. Take your arms like you're a, like you're a cactus. Your arms may not touch the floor. And then turn the cactus downward and upward. I'm trying to do some really good demonstration here. So if you need to peek, turn your face to the right while you're doing this. Oh. And turn your face to the left. And then Press, see if you can touch the floor now with your arms. Mine now reached the floor, it took a while. See if you can press your arms or your elbows into the floor. Do you feel the contraction of those muscles? Stay in the contracted space for a moment. And then exhale and relax into the ball. Move the balls up just a tiny, just a tiny little bit. 
Bring your arms at your sides and remove the block from under your head and see how that goes. And just rock side to side. Just a gentle rock with your legs. Inhaling. Pausing and exhaling. Take your hands behind your head like a pillow and interlace your fingers and move your elbows as far away from each other as you can. And then squeeze your elbows together, squeezing your head and then opening and wing spanning. Just a little in and just a little out. Good. Let's move those balls up a little higher. Now lift your hips up off the floor and your head. Cradle your head with your hands and push and pull with your feet in this location that is an exacerbated tension spot. This is an area where your levator scapula meets your upper sh inner shoulder blade as well as upper trapezius fibers and rhomboids. Keep your hips lifted and stretch your chin to your chest. Use your hands to lengthen the back of your neck. Really lift your hips up high. And then lay your head back on the floor. Take your brick and slide it under your hips. Reach behind you and just make sure the balls are in your trape upper trapezius, but they're not all the way up to your neck yet. They're not in the place where you'd stick a thumb for a massage. <laughs> Bring your right arm over your head. Bring your left arm down at your side. Look to the left. Really try to improve your, the, the, your neck turn. And really try to get your right thumb to the floor and your right elbow straight. Now switch like a little soldier and turn your face to the right as you outstretch your left thumb behind you and trying to touch the floor. Really turn your head. And now we'll just do some switching here, side to side. Slow breathing, slow movement. And bring your elbows to the floor and slide the balls all the way up to the very top of your back where your neck meets. Use your feet to push and pull like you're a little car stuck in the mud and you're using your weight to scrub out that place below your neck. Bring your hands again behind your head and stretch your chin, stretching the back of your neck like a little snail curl of your chin to your chest. Then lift your hips all the way up and try to Weight in and push and pull with your feet right here. Use your feet so much that you roll the balls all the way back down to your shoulder blades and then back up to your, your neck. So down to your shoulder blades, maybe a little past to your bra strap line and right back up. Mo. Then once they get to the top, take the balls out, lay back, no bricks, no props. <sighs> Let's say it together, inhale. <sighs> Good. 
roll towards the camera laying on your side. I'm gonna use my block for my head. And I have my balls here. I'm gonna put the ball underneath the deltoid of my left arm. For me, it's my left arm because just the way I'm set up. Do you see how it's like under there? And if I were to put the other ball on top, I could actually make a deltoid sandwich. Make it comfy. If you need a bolster or something between your knees or another block to really make this comfortable, because I don't want you to have your nervous system firing because you're uncomfortable. Now, use the top ball to give yourself what used to be termed like a rug burn. <laughs> I just want you to pin and spin your anterior deltoid, the top of the deltoid against the ball, like you're plucking the muscle away from the bone a little. It doesn't have to hurt to work. Just pin and spin all over from your chest down to your shoulder and onto the front of your delt. Discontinue the right, the top arm, and now just move the bottom arm like it's a little chicken wing. Holly, are you using the smallest ball or the medium ball? I'm using the mediums because they give me more elevation away from the floor. Thanks. They go up deeper into the muscle. Yeah. But the other ones are a little pluckier. If pluckier is a word. <laughs> Go on to your deltoid, your medial delt, like sort of roll toward it and you can kind of like rock toward and away from the ball. How does this feel, Dante? I hope this is working well for you. You don't have to chat if you could do this or that. <laughs> and then discontinue and just bleh. <sighs> Roll back onto your back for a moment. And I want you to bring your arms above your head. You can move the brick out and just see if one arm, you can like make like uh, snow angel movements on the floor. See if one arm, the rolled arm, has more range of motion or just a more fluidity to movement. And now take your arm, um, excuse me, just come to the other side. We're gonna do the other side. So we'll begin with the ball underneath the upper deltoid and the top ball becomes the spinner. I even do this pin and spin. You can turn your head away and pin and spin your whole side of your neck with that upper ball. And all the way down until the deltoid. If you want to take a pit stop to the top of the other side neck, because I didn't really instruct that on the other side, feel free. And then my left arm, my top arm starts to get tired doing that. So I just discontinue that motion and start with the other. I'll sometimes just sustain compression and lay here. Like that could just be enough. Oh. And then you can just continue rolling like that. 
and lay here. Wow. I feel some freedom. A little difference there for me, for sure. So this next technique is a real humdinger, okay? I'm just letting you know. This next technique, watch how I get into it. You need, do you both have some wall space that you could just pop into? I'll yeah. show you how you're gonna, you're gonna do this one. Okay, so there's my wall and my dog. Let me move my dog. <laughs> that dust you. Generally, our head and neck is longer than one brick, so we use two bricks like that in a, in a row up against the wall. The ball is going here. Okay, I'm going to bring this a little closer so you can really see how I'm going to do this. So I'm going to lay back with my head on the inside and the ball there where your neck meets your shoulder where your neck meets the top so it's not way out here it's real close in and then i'm using my feet to push me against the ball and then i'm going to turn my head this is massive by the way and you can just stay here and use your feet to push and pull or you can turn your head, or you can move your shoulder up and down where the ball is lodged between the upper fibers of the trapezius and some of the uh, scalenes. You can move your shoulder up or down to sort of roll against the upper trapezius. Yeah, this is a humdinger. Sometimes I just sustain compression here and move my jaw, laterally deviate your jaw. So like you're going and open your jaw all the way. And close it gently. Sometimes I'll put my hand that's connected to the ball on my thigh and push really hard against my thigh. There's a really good contraction you get there. And then I'll relax it. Act like you're gonna turn away from the ball, away from the, the brick. Act like you're going to, and the ball will sort of shift more towards the back. And then shift back towards and away. And then dismount and relax. Take some time here to relax this one out. <sighs> I could go right to sleep right now. Feel like somebody tased me. Okay, so second side. And I'll put this ball into the second side. Some people like to lay on the brick. You could try that too. It doesn't really work as well for me. Sometimes I'll like take my hips way up and drop the ball in. Just be careful because below this area in here is your thoracic outlet where your collarbone, below it is the brachial plexus of the nerves that come through here. So if you hit some of that, just move the ball.
feel free to turn your face toward and away. Use your jaw. Sometimes I'll even draw circles on the sky with my elbow. Motion is lotion. And then when you're ready, move away, discontinue rolling there and just let yourself interpret your attention to the warmth sensations. See if you can feel the sensation below your tongue, to your ears, and down to your shoulder. Okay. So these techniques, this one, we'll do it one at a time. And the ball will go under pec minor. So I'm gonna take one block to lay, to sort of lay on, or a pillow, and one under pec minor, which is not breast tissue, it's, and it's not shoulder right between. And the ball lodges like that. Sometimes I do this two at a time, but I think it's easier to do things one at a time. And then you're gonna take your arm and I'll wait for you. I need to put a mat under this so that it won't slide on my wood floor here. Make it comfortable, like I don't want you, I don't want the, the block to poke you. Just use the block more as a, a podium for the ball, not for your chest. And then do a little, my hand, I'm gonna move this away a little now so you can see my hand uh, there. Are you breathing, Dante? Please breathe. You can just rest over it and waggle your tush side to side. <laughs> Internally rotate your arm and um, let me get some out of here. Sorry. Internally rotate and external irritate. Yeah, that's external, that's internal. And just relax, bring your arm behind you and try to high five the sky. Yeah, Dante, good. High five the sky and turn your face away the other way. Don't worry, I won't do anything tricky. And then come back to neutral and let's move the ball to the other side. You can even get into anterior delt a little here if you want, no problem. Internal, external rotation is a really nice way to clunkety clunk over the pec minor fibers.
try to really tuck it in there. Yeah, like really tuck it toward pec major and you can roll toward it if you want. Oh, never done that before. You can sustain compression, just breathe. See if you can take your breath clavicularly, clavicular, clavicle. See if you can breathe up to where the ball is. And then exhale. Okay, press up onto your hands and your knees. Let's do some cat cow right here. Inhale, nose and tail. Exhale, round to your spine. And then press up and back, downward facing dog. See what that feels like to you. Maybe turn your head side to side. Let your head hang and nod your head a little yes. To the bottom and the top of the yes. And then really stretch back. Let's grab the sides of our mat with our hands grab your grab your mat and stretch the mat forward with your hands and your arms and then place your knees back on the floor walk your arms forward keep your hips over your knees and stretch maybe your forehead is on the floor if you need a brick here put your head on a brick and stretch long. See if you can squeeze your shoulder blades together here to get even more rhomboid action. And then try not to squeeze your shoulder blades together here. Try to round them, like suck your armpits in and up while you stretch your arms forward. And then walk back up into your wrists under shoulders and sit back. I'm going to reset here so that you're not looking into the light of my windows. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ah. <sighs> Take one, take one, and pin and spin your chest. So Dante, I don't know if you've got fur. <laughs> this is hard if you're pretty furry. Okay, so why don't you stay up in the neck area where you're shaven and pin and spin below your ear there's your your where your mastoid process is it feels like a rhinoceros protrusion nose go under there and pin and spin and hold it and then let it go yeah go back there pin spin hold and let it go oh my jaw hangs more on that side now and then do the other side pin spin hold yes i see you dusty you're very cute and let it go pin spin hold 
stretch your jaw away from it. Go. <laughs> and let that go. This muscle here is called your platysma. Put it under your chin and you're gonna pin and spin it and then stick your jaw forward here. Uh. And then let that go and just let your jaw hang. Amazing, right? Yeah. It's amazing. Fascia is amazing. Do it again. Pin, spin, whirl, hold. Uh, jut your mandible, your jaw. And then relax. <sighs> Ball in hand, ponytail completely moved away. Lucky you, Dante. Dante, this is Jennifer, by the way. Hi, Dante. Hi. Sorry, I didn't mean to be rude. Um, hold the ball in your hand like that and just roll it around the scalenes, all these ropey vertical muscles. And then come to the other side. I get the chills when I do this. Okay, and then this one is specifically for Dante. You're gonna love this, Jennifer, too. Oh. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take one, you might need, not need a, a brick, Dante, cause you're not shaped like a chick, but chicks sometimes need a, a, a brick where your waist goes in, okay? And this is the position, this is the rolling position, and we're going to the wall. So it goes like this. And we're gonna work on these forearm muscles that when they're tight, they have massive repercussions for neck, neck discomfort. I like to cross fiber them by rocking and strip them by rotating. You may or may not need um, the brick inside your waist, Dante, you may want it just for control. You can try it either way. Oh. Can you believe what's in there, Jennifer? Ow, it never hurts here. Why is it hurting? <laughs> it's because you don't know where your pain is being held. You don't realize where you're tight. Totally. Wow. And it doesn't have to hurt to work. Don't push so hard. Yeah, I don't mean, I mean hurt good, you know? Like, no, I know, but you know, I'm, I'm considerate of people. People like get into the sensation and they're like, wow, how much sensation can I produce here? Yeah. It, it's Ooh. necessary to be the, that vigorous. Isn't it amazing how you can feel your fingers moving? Yeah. Now, Find something interesting, maybe more towards your elbow, okay, like where it's a little chubbier. And then I want you to do this with your wrist, like your karate chopping just at the wrist, like this, um, Dante. And I want you to roll your wrist in circles and open and close your fingers. People that have arthritis in their fingers, this is a, a nice way to start to make more lymph and synovial fluid action. 
Now actually go to your elbow, like go all the way to the side of your elbow and roll around the tendons that connect to the, it's called your olecron process, your elbow. And then you can even smooth your elbow so that your arm is more in front of you and start to roll where your tricep meets that. You can even dip into your tricep and roll up. I should call this wing care. <laughs> Stop on something that is interesting, if you'd like. I, I have interesting just above my elbow, more onto my upper arm bone. And I can trace the ulna, the radius, where they come together at the olecron process. And then just put that Actually, let's um, put the ball on the inner edge for a moment and just lean. But I don't want you down here by your wrist. This is a no-no. No, no. Don't do that. Stay up in here. And you can do a little roly-poly. See how I do that? And then I'm even going to pin and spin my bicep or even externally rotate my arm bone and put the bicep on the wall and strip it. This feels so good. So I'm like this on the wall. Now I did my left side and not my right, but I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a test and a retest. I'm gonna stand at the wall, away from the wall. Let me move this back so I don't look like my head is cut off. And I'm gonna put my hands on the wall like I'm in plank, leaning into it. And then I'm gonna take my feet a little wider, like plank. Put my left hand, the, wool, the one that I just rolled out with, on the wall. I'm gonna put my right hand on my thigh. I'm gonna plank out here. And I'm gonna do some push-ups. Oh, use the strength of that arm. We just rolled. Resist as you go down. Don't throw yourself into it. Come on, slow it down. Yes, Dante, beautiful. Slow that push away from the wall down, Dante. Use your fingertips. And now switch hands and see if you feel a difference between your control with the left arm and the right arm. And then we'll grab the ball and start the left, uh, the second side. Forearm work. The issues are in the tissues and motion is lotion.
you can roll all the way down to your hand on the outer edge of your And then remember to do your little karate chop and your little roll. Make it to your elbow. So many tenderness attachments here related to tennis elbow, we could call it tango elbow. So turn away from the wall a little bit to get into the tricep. Notice you can strip the tricep by bending and straightening your knees, or you can cross fiber by rotating. Sustaining compression is also a really nice idea. Just leaning into it. Jennifer, who has joined you? Who's joined me? Oh, you're in a mirror. I'm in a mirror, yeah. <laughs> my twin, my evil twin. Your evil twin joined you. That's cute. If you wanna drop the brick and go to the inner edge, It kind of feels good to even roll out your obliques, your inner and outer obliques on your body using your forearm. <laughs> it's like a double do. Sort of strange. And finally, drop and give me 10. Boom. Drop and give me 400. Firm your belly. Chaturanga push ups on the wall. Feel how strong you are. If you want to hit the deck, hit the deck. Wow, I haven't done these in a long time. How many can you push out? On your knees, try. And then stretch back into child's pose. Reach back, stretch back. Come on up onto your knees. And step up. So if you can hear me. Find a little bit here. What I want you to do. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Take your left hand to the wall or what hand, whatever hand you can, to the wall and stretch away. <sighs> stretch what we just worked. Notice that my left elbow is bent a little. I'm not sticking it out so far that I'm straining that. There's a little bend and I'm turning my chest away from the wall. Now I'm gonna try to pull the paint down the wall. Act like you're trying to pull the paint down the wall. Be gentle. And then relax that. Are you breathing? And do the other side.
Gentle pulling the paint down the wall. Contraction while you're stretched. And then relax that. Interlace your hands behind your back. If you need a strap, grab one and stretch your arms away. And bring your arms down at your side. Relax your arms down to your side. Standing in Tadasana. Ah. Inhale in. And exhale out. Close your eyes, standing nice and tall. We call this standing Shavasana. See if you can place your weight evenly over the four corners of your feet, big toe, pinky toe, back of heel, rising up energy through the leg bones, tailbone down, lower belly in, sternum lifting, shoulder blades down, but not squeezing together head over neck, chin down and in, energy light through the crown of your head. I am whole, I am complete. Really let the exhale leave your body. Hands flow to heart center, feeling a great sense of appreciation for this self-care practice that has so much potential for healing. Peace, peace, peace. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you for coming to class. Thanks, Holly. You're welcome. So this class is $10. If you want to Venmo me, you can. You can. Done. I think I see that you did that already, Jennifer. Thank you so much. And if you don't know how to Venmo me, it's at Holly Wellness with an I, H-O-L-L-I, W-E-L-L-N-E-S-S. And um, on Venmo, if that's not a good way to get me, you can get me through my phone number on Zell. And that's also on my email. If you don't remember it, just email me and I'll email it to you. Thank you so much. And I'll be back next Saturday at 10. Okay. Is that hey, are you, uh, Holly, are you doing yoga classes? I am. I do yoga classes. I'm going to be doing one Monday night at 7. Monday. Um, yeah, Monday night at 7. If there's other times that you're looking for, I'm trying to figure out what the best times to teach this stuff. And... Um, I, I, love a, I love a morning class, even though I never feel like doing it. <laughs> Here. And I'm always so happy I did, you know, that I feel good all day. I get it. I totally understand. Um, so uh, I'll check in and you'll, oh, you'll, I'm not really using, I'm trying to stay out of Facebook right now, Jennifer. So you're on my email list. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. I'll look for your email. I'm trying to stay off Facebook too, although I don't know, I'm, I'm going to suck it up until November 3rd and then. <laughs> leave them. I love you. <laughs> I have a brief question. Um, sure. Can this, like, this, first of all, amazing, just completely amazing, like, wow. Um, and and can I do this every day? What's the recovery idea? You can do this. You can do this every day, and it doesn't have to hurt to work. If mm -hmm. I were you. I do a quick and dirty before you do your tango, bring your balls to your room, uh, do the whole routine I gave you, and just do that. I can send you the recording. Okay, Sometimes yeah. I'll even, before class, Dante, I don't know, you'll, you'll see this in my classes, people will go to the, um, to the wall, and I call this come hither. 
Yeah. Okay. Do do that. Bring the ball. Prep your muscles. Quick and dirty. Neck. Everything. And then in the evening, you could do a tension tune down, laying on the floor. Don't yeah. overdo. Don't underdo. Just do. Okay. Okay. I will, I will, I will uh, I'll try this this week. I mean, it's, it just feels so essential to, un even with yoga, as amazing as yoga is, there's certain patterns and stuff, you know, especially with your own habits and musculature. So to undo is like, I don't know, it seems very essential. So I, I, I balance, we have to balance. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you so much holly okay well, see you. good to see you thanks for being here bye holly bye jennifer